Luke chapter 9, beginning at verse 57, reading through verse number 62. And it came to pass that as they went in the way, a certain man said unto him, Lord, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. And Jesus said unto him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests. But the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. And he said unto another, Follow me. But he said, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. Jesus said unto him, let the dead bury their dead. And people think, Tommy, I'm hurt when I say we need to put God first instead of our kids' sports schedules or instead of, you know, uh, work and jobs and making money. They think I'm hurt. Jesus said, uh, you, they don't need you at the funeral. Let the dead bury the dead. But go thou and preach the kingdom of God. And another also said, Lord, I will follow thee, but... There's always a but. Let me first go bid them farewell, which are at home, at my house. And Jesus said unto him, No man having put his hand to the plow, and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. God. No man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. I want to talk to us today on the topic how and where to focus. This message is not what you might think at first glance it's going to be. So uh, put your seatbelt on because the Holy Ghost is about to rock you. Amen. If you bow your heads with me a moment. Master, Savior, soon coming King, we love you, Jesus. Oh, great God, we love you today, Lord. We thank you for the Word of God. Lord, I begin this service today feeling rather down and a little disappointed and discouraged, but my goodness, just singing the songs of Zion this afternoon, and my spirit is lifted and I'm raised up as the Word of God declares to heavenly places with the Lord. Master, the Word of God that you've given me for this moment is a powerful, wonderful, inspiring, encouraging Word, but it can only go forth with power and might if the Holy Ghost anoints this old preacher today, it allows me to be a vessel, oh God, that you're able to use to be a blessing and an encouragement to the people of God. Anoint every cell in my body, Master, right now in the name of Jesus. Let the Word of God go forth. Oh God, let it go forth and let it bring salvation to the lost let it bring restoration to the backslider let it bring healing to the sick let it bring deliverance to those that are bound in the name of jesus break every fetter today oh god by reason of your anointing for we ask it in none other than jesus holy precious wonderful name amen praise amen. god and amen and where to focus. You'll notice in my artwork over my head today, my illustration, I'm using someone holding a camera lens. When you're going to take a picture, if you're going to take a picture, you've got to know how and you've got to know where to focus. And I tell them the truth. Amen. Yeah. You got to know how to focus. You turn the lens a little bit this way or that way, and it'll adjust the clarity of your view. And you've got to know where to focus. Honey, if you're not looking at your subject, then any focusing you do is completely worthless. 
Right. Because if you focus your camera on this over here, and then you turn it to this over here, this over here may not be in focus if I tell the truth. Mm -hmm. Therefore, if you're going to focus on anything, you've got to focus on what you're trying to photograph. If you're going to focus on anything today as a child of God, you've got to focus on your destination. You've got to focus on where you're headed and where you're going, not where you've been. Jesus said, no man that puts his hand to the plow and plows looking behind him is worthy of the kingdom of God. No, because you've got to focus straight ahead. you got to focus on the task at hand. Am I telling the truth? Yeah. you got to focus on your goal, on your objective. A lot of believers today are focused on making heaven. i got news for you. got a little revelation for you. You're focused on the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. What, Pastor? I thought making heaven was our goal. I thought that's what we were supposed to focus on. Oh, no, 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 no. I told you I was going to help you understand today how and where to focus. Well, obviously, you don't understand where to focus. I'm focused on missing hell. I'm focused on avoiding eternal punishment. I'm focused on avoiding damnation. I'm focused on this. I'm focused on that. I'm focused on being reunited with my mom, my dad, my grandma, my grandpa. Are you focused on the wrong thing? Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. Wherefore, seeing also we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Listen. Looking unto Jesus. Did you hear me? Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Where need I focus? Where should I be focusing today on, on avoiding hell, on making heaven? No! I should be focused on Jesus. Hallelujah! Looking unto Jesus. Jesus was able to make it through the crucifixion because Jesus was able to focus on the joy that was set before him. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm going to tell you, you're not going to make heaven if you're focused on making heaven. Oh my goodness, I hope you heard me today. You're not going to make heaven, children, if your focus is on making heaven. Only way you're going to make heaven is if you're focused on Jesus. Hallelujah. That's your, that's your true subject. That's where your camera ought to be pointed. That's what you ought to be focusing on, Jesus. As long as you keep Jesus in your sights, as long as you keep Him in focus, hallelujah, you're going to make it. Because your goal, listen to me today, your goal is not to make heaven. Your goal is to see Jesus. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. Well, if your goal is to see Jesus, why would you be focusing on the pearly gates? Hello now. Mm. No, my goal isn't the pearly gates. My goal is to see Jesus. Why is my goal to see Jesus? Well, I'll tell you why. Because the greatest promise that God has made to His people, if they would believe on Him and trust His gospel, is not that He would give them eternal life. Oh, no. That's a big promise. That's an exciting promise. That's a good promise. But that's not the biggest one. You know what the biggest one is? The biggest one is this. Matthew 5 verse 8. Blessed are the pure in heart. Listen to me now. For they shall see 
God. Hallelujah. Oh, my God, have mercy. Oh, I might live forever. I might be reunited with friends and family who have gone on before me. But, honey, the promise of God's word is, the biggest promise God's ever made to his people is, that we shall see him. Hallelujah. Something that as human beings, we are not even capable of doing today. Oh my goodness. In 1 John chapter 3 verses 1 and 2. Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us. That we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not. Because it knew him not. Who is the subject of this sentence? Behold what manner of love it didn't say God. It says, Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God, again in reference to the term Father. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew Him. Now who did it not know? The Father. He didn't change the subject and say because it knew Jesus not or because it knew the Son not. No, no, no. It says because it knew Him not. And the Father is the subject of our sentence. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. And it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when He shall appear. Who's He? The Father! Oh my God, you better listen carefully now. When He shall appear, we shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. Hallelujah to God. Oh, we shall see Him as He is. Human beings can't even look at God today. The Word of God said no man has seen God at any time. God But the biggest promise God ever made was not that we'd live forever, but that we would see Him. One of the, hope I don't upset anybody when I say this, but one of the hypocrisies of Trinitarian theology, and I grew up as a Trinitarian in a Trinitarian church, one of the hypocrisies of Trinitarian theology that really kind of irks me sometimes. They say God is three people, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Well, got news for you. The word God and the word Father are synonymous. If you ever notice in the Word of God, they always, always use those terms interchangeably. Always. They refer to God. They refer to the Father. When they refer to the Father, you know they're speaking of God. Am I telling the truth? The term Father and the term God are the same. They're one and the same. When we say Father, we're saying God. When we say God, we're saying Father. Therefore, God cannot be three in one because the term God in and of itself means the Father. Are you following me so far? If the term God means and is generally used in reference to the Father, listen, i got some stuff to talk to you about. The Lord focused on the throne, not the cross. As believers, we're called to be focused upon the goal, not the journey. And certainly not the obstacles that litter our path as we journey toward glory. Paul said, laying aside the sin and the weight. He said, whatever you do, don't focus on the stuff that's holding you up. Don't focus on the stuff that's tying you down. Too many people become focused on their weaknesses. Too many people become focused on their sin. So too many people become focused on issues in their life. Honey, God's grace is bigger than you. Keep your eyes on Jesus. 
Don't ever focus on the things that are trying to hold you back. Because you focus on them, you stop walking. Mm -hmm. You stop moving. But you stay focused on Jesus. The Lord called Peter out of the boat and said, Peter said, Lord, if you say so, I'll be able to walk on the water like you. The Lord said, all right, Peter, come on. Here comes Peter. The Bible said Peter walked on the water. It wasn't like he fell directly into the deep. No. He didn't start to fail. He didn't start to fall into the, the water. He didn't begin to swallow him up until he took his focus off of Jesus. Right. started looking at the waves. <laughs> he started thinking about, well, now naturally, uh, this shouldn't be happening. According to the laws of science and nature, this shouldn't be happening. Uh, Peter, honey, you better get focused on Jesus. You better keep him in your sights because right now you're focusing on why things shouldn't be happening the way they're happening. Got news for you. You, walk, you focus on Jesus and you're going to walk over the stones and you're going to walk over the logs and you're going to walk over the things that seem like they would hold you back and keep you from making heaven your home and seeing the Lord. Oh my God, you keep focused on Jesus and the things that ought to be tripping you and stopping you are going to literally pass right through your legs as you walk on your way. Hallelujah. Woo. Glory. Many of God's people today are still focused on the wrong things. They're looking forward to the ultimate prize. Excuse me. They're not looking forward to the ultimate prize. But rather the peripheral blessings. Our goal isn't as children of God to avoid hell. Our goal is not as children of God to avoid damnation or punishment. Our goal is not to see loved ones or to live in a golden mansion. Our goal and therefore that which we ought to be focused on is seeing Jesus. We are striving in this life to live for the Lord because we seek to see Jesus. That is the ultimate reward and our most valued objective. Only a chosen few will get to experience this glorious revelation. Hallelujah. We discussed how in 1 John 3, 1 and 2, the subject of the passage is the Father. The world knows us not because it knew Him, who the Father not. When He, who the Father shall appear, we shall be like Him, who the Father. Hallelujah. For we shall see Him, who the Father as He is. Oh no, Pastor, you've got that wrong. We're going to see the Son. We're going to see Jesus. He's the Son. You're, you're mistaken. You're confused. Well, apparently the Word of God is also confused. Isaiah 9 and 6, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Singular, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. So if I'm confused, so is the Scriptures. Mm -hmm. John chapter 5, verses 38 through 40, uh, 36 through 42. Jesus said, But I have greater witness than that of John, for the works which the Father hath given me to finish the same works that I do bear witness of me that the Father hath sent me. And the Father himself which hath sent me hath borne witness of me. Ye have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape. And ye have not his word abiding in you. For whom he hath sent, him ye believe not. Search the scriptures. For in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of 
me. And ye will not come to me that ye might have life. I receive not honor from men, but I know you that ye have not the love of God in you. I am come in my Father's name, and you receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him ye will receive. Now listen, that's setting the stage. John 14, 5 through 11. Thomas saith, saith unto him, Lord, now Jesus just said, you've never seen God. Isn't that what he just said? You've never seen his shape. You've never heard his voice. He was talking to people that rejected him. He said, if you read the scriptures, if you search the scriptures, guess who the subject is of the scriptures? I am. Who's the subject of the scriptures? Who's the subject of the Old Testament? Who's the subject of the prophets and the Psalms and the law of Moses? God is our Father. The Father is the... Jesus said, if you search the scriptures, he said, these are they which testify of me. I'm the subject of the Old Testament. But listen. Thomas saith unto him. Lord we know not whither thou goest. And how we know the way. Jesus saith unto him. I am the way. The truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father. But by me. If ye had known me. Ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him. Listen. And have seen him. Children. This would be blasphemy. In Jewish teaching. For any man to say. If you've laid eyes on me. You've seen the Father. And notice the Lord is specifically using the term Father. He's not saying if you've seen me, you've seen God, which would be a little more generic. No, he's using the title Father. If you have seen me, you should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father. And it sufficeth us. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet thou hast not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. This is blasphemy. And how sayest thou then, show us the Father? We still got people don't understand that Jesus is the Father. They don't understand that Isaiah 9 and 6 said he shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father. And they still don't get it. Mm -hmm. They still want to cut God into three pieces and make Jesus the Son number two. Have I been so long time with you, and yet thou hast not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, show us the Father? Again, he didn't say, show us God, which would be a more generic term. He said, show us the Father, specifically. Believest thou not that I am in the Father? And the Father in me. There's a very complex relationship going on here. If you remember, I've talked about this before. Like in, in heaven, the Word of God doesn't say that the Lamb is going to sit beside the throne of God. No, 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 no. It says that God and the Lamb sit in the throne of God. The Word of God said no man has seen God at any time but the Son which is in the bosom of the Father. Not who sits at the right hand of the Father. Who is part of God. Yes. Hath revealed Him. My God have mercy. Now listen. He goes on to say Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself. But the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me 
for the very work's sake. Jesus is literally saying, the things that I do and the things that I say, I do and say because the Spirit of God is inside this body. This body is human. This Spirit is not. Hallelujah. The Spirit within me is divine. The Father, the Word of God said, was in Christ. And again, you notice they always use the term, uh, excuse me, the Word of God said that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto Himself. Unto Himself. He literally was doing something for Himself. Jesus was not reconciling the world on behalf of somebody else. No, God was in Christ. The Father was in Christ, reconciling the world unto Himself. <sighs> Say, Pastor, why is this even important? Hang on, you'll get it in a minute. Revelation 21, verses 1 through 7. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. And there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. And he, not they, he will dwell with them and they shall be his people and God himself shall be with them and be their God and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death neither sorrow nor crying neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away listen and he that sat upon the throne Oh, and he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he, who's he? He that sat upon the throne said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he, who's he, he that sat upon the throne, said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. Oh, glory, listen. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. He that sat on the throne, the same one that said, I'm the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Listen, he said, I am he that liveth. Or excuse me, let me go back a little bit. I'm going ahead of myself. And he said unto me, it is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is the thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things be his God. Listen. And he shall be my son. Oh, hallelujah. Well, glory. Woo. The Alpha and the Omega said, I will be his God and he shall be my son. Who does that make him? The My Lord, have mercy, children. It's there. <laughs> I had to pull another pair of glasses. Out underneath the pulpit, I lost that pair. Glory to God. Oh, Pastor, no, you're confusing things. He that sat upon the throne. We know the Bible tells us. In the book of Revelation, there ain't but one throne. Right. And the only one who sits in that throne is God. Right. All right. But here's how he gave himself away. 
He said, <laughs> I'm the Alpha and the Omega. Listen to Revelation 1, 7 through 18. Let's figure out who Alpha and Omega is. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. Listen to verse 8. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. I, John, also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. What thou seest, write in a book, and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, and unto Smyrna, and unto Pergamos, and unto Thyatira, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, who is called the Son of Man, Jesus, mm -hmm. clothed with a garment down to the foot, and gird about the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were like were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as the flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. This is the same one. He's describing the one who just said, I am the Alpha and the Omega. Am I telling the truth? Yes. Listen. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Listen, you want to know who the Alpha and the Omega is? You want to know who said, I will be his God and he shall be my son? Listen, he said, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead. Behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. Honey, the Alpha and the Omega is Jesus. Mm -hmm. The one who said he would be our God and we would be his sons <laughs> is Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh my God, have mercy. Isaiah knew what he was talking about when he declared him to be the everlasting Father. Hallelujah to God. Listen, Revelation chapter 21, verses 3 through 7. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his I'm sorry, no, I already read that, didn't I? Yes, I did, I'm sorry, I'm repeating. Revelation 22, 12 through 16. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according to his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. 
the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without our dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. Listen, I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. See, here's the exciting thing. The biggest promise God ever made to the church is not that we'd make heaven, not that we'd live forever. It's that, listen to me, that we would see the Father. That we would see God. Oh my goodness. It's not about seeing the Son, some second person of the Holy Trinity. Oh no, 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 no. no. We're going to see the Father. We're going to see God. But listen... He said, my reward is with me. We know this is Jesus. In Matthew 16, 27, Jesus said, For the Son of Man shall come, listen, in the glory of His Father, with His angels. And then He shall reward every man according to His works. Well, the Alpha and the Omega said that he was coming and that his reward was with him. Isn't that what he said? To give every man according to his works. But now here's the key. He said he's coming in the glory of his Father. There's a little problem with that theologically. Because according to the Word of God, God the Father will not give his glory to anyone but God himself. In other words, he takes credit for what he does. He does not give credit to someone else for what he's done, nor does he take credit from someone else for what they've done. Right. Now listen. Isaiah 42 verse 8, I am the Lord, that is Jehovah, that is my name, and my glory will I not give to another. Jesus said, for the Son of Man shall come in the glory of His Father. Isaiah 48, 11, For mine own sake, even for mine own sake, will I do it. God says, I'm going to do this, and I'm doing it for my own sake. Listen, He said, for how should my name be polluted? And I will not give my glory unto another. In other words, he is literally saying, I'm not going to allow my name to be compromised by my taking credit for something I have not done. He said, I'm going to do it for my own sake. I'm going to do it. Why? So that the glory is rightfully mine. Right. Oh my goodness, have mercy. Listen. How are we doing? All right. Philippians 2, 5 through 11, let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Equal means the same as. Mm -hmm. If I draw on a chalkboard behind me, 2 plus 2, any math teacher will tell you, put an equal sign in there and then write 4. They're going to tell you that this equation on the left and this equation on the right are identical. They are the same. They are expressed differently. They are manifested differently, but they are literally identical. An equal sign means identical, the same. Not part of, not one third of, equal, identical made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men and being found in fashion as a man he humbled himself and became obedient unto death 
even the death of the cross. Wherefore God hath also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. Got news for you, children. That would be inclusive of the name Jehovah. Mm -hmm. Then at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. What did God say? I don't take glory for anything I haven't done. Hello now. Mm -hmm. I don't take glory for something. I said, but when we declare Jesus Christ is Lord, who receives the glory for that declaration? The Father. Hallelujah. Why? Because we're acknowledging that Jesus Christ is yes. in fact God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is returning for a people who are focused on seeing the Father as He is. You do not focus the camera without first setting your subject in front of it. If you focus first on anything else in the room, your subject may not be in full focus when you come back to it. Mm -hmm. You must be looking directly at your subject, seeing it first blurry, and then focusing upon it until it becomes clear. When you're sleeping in bed and you hear a loud noise and you suddenly sit up in your bed and you're blurry-eyed and you're looking, you, you don't, if you heard a sound over here, you don't look that way, do you? No. No, you're going to look where you think you heard the sound coming from. Now, at first you may be kind of sleepy-eyed. At first you might not be able to see real clear. But you're going to look in the direction of where you heard the sound until it comes into focus. Right. Mm -hmm. Looking unto Jesus. Keeping Jesus in our sight because the day is coming, hallelujah, when He's going to come into focus and all of a sudden we're going to realize we're looking at the Father, hallelujah. We're suddenly going to realize we're looking at the Father. Right now, people can only see Him within a certain light, with a certain amount of understanding. But one day, He will come into focus. In 2 Timothy 4, 6-8, the Apostle Paul writes, For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought the good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me that day. And not to me only, but listen, but unto them also that love His appearing. Oh my goodness, who's the Lord coming for? I'll tell you who He's coming for. Those who love His appearing. Those who are dying for Him to get here. Hallelujah. Those who are looking, those who have got their eyes on Him. And all they want more than anything in this life is for Him to come into focus. They want to realize that great promise God made. We shall see Him as He is. Hallelujah. Glory to God. In Titus chapter 2, 11 through 14, for the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope, listen, and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, who gave himself, singular, for us, yes. that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people. 
zealous of good works. He was not doing it on behalf of another person yes, yes. of the Godhead. No, no, no. He was doing it for himself. God said, for my own sake I'm going to do this. And I will not let my name become polluted by letting someone else do something that I'm taking credit mm -hmm. for. Mm -hmm. Philippians chapter 3 verses 20 through 21 for our conversation is in heaven from whence also we look for the Savior the Lord Jesus Christ and Titus just said that our great God and our Savior Jesus Christ here Paul says the Savior so there's only one Savior mm -hmm. and he is the Lord Jesus Christ yes who shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. When we were created in the Garden of Eden, the Word of God said, man was made how? In God's own image. Mm -hmm. When we get to glory, once again, we will be in God's own image. Hallelujah. We shall be like Him. Hallelujah. We shall be like Him. We shall see Him as He is. How? Why? Because we shall be like Him. Him. If you remember, Adam and Eve were able to hide from the Lord in the Garden of Eden when He came down to walk with them in the Garden. How were they able to hide from the Lord? How were they able to even think for a moment that they could keep themselves out of His field of vision if they couldn't see Him? When the Lord came down to walk with them, He came down and manifested Himself in a manner that they were able to see. Because they were like him. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. That's right. We're just headed home, children. We're just headed back to where this whole thing started. It's a big circle. Hallelujah. God is restoring us to our lost estate. In Acts chapter 20, verse 28, the word of God said, Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers, listen, to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. To feed the church of God, which he, who he, God he, hath purchased with his own blood own blood. In Hebrews 13 verse 12, wherefore Jesus also that he might sanctify the people with his own blood. Well, that tells you something, don't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Either the word of God is one big pile of confusing mess that, you know, they're missaying things all over the place, or Jesus is God and God is Jesus. Hallelujah. And the Father was manifested in the Son. They're not separate people, they're separate manifestations of one singular God. Hallelujah. And honey, the day is coming. We're going to be able to see God as He is. We're not going to have to see Him in the personage of the Son. It will no longer be necessary to see Him as the Son of Man. Uh -huh. As a physical manifestation of God. That will no longer be necessary. Why? Because we shall be like Him. And as we are like Him, we will be able to see Him as He is. Almost done today, children. I'm actually going to keep it under time. We cannot focus on our final goal if we do not in truth know what that goal is. The goal cannot come into focus if we're not looking in the right place to begin with. You can only focus on something that you're looking squarely at. I'll tell you a little secret about us. 
One God, Jesus' name, baptized, Holy Ghost filled, Acts 2.38, preaching, tongue-talking folks. I'm going to tell you something about us. We've already seen that Jesus is God. Right. We already see that Jesus is the Father. We already see that He is the Almighty. Hallelujah. <laughs> but in the end, our blurry vision will become clear. Yes, thank you. Just so long as we're looking at the right subject mm -hmm. from the start. Oh, there's a lot of people looking at Jesus, but they think Jesus is number two out of three. Uh-uh. Uh -huh. Wrong. Mm -hmm. You're looking at the wrong Jesus. He's given us the revelation of who He is. He told us. He said to Philip, Philip, have I been with you so long and you still have the gall to ask me, show us the Father. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Isaiah 9 and 6, His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Everlasting Father, the Everlasting Father, not the Everlasting Son, not the Eternal Son, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. If you're focused on Jesus, but you're looking at the right hand of the throne of God, uh-oh. got news for you, honey. You're focused on the wrong place. You're hoping to see Jesus. He's not there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he will not be on the right hand of the throne of God. He's there. The physical man of Jesus is there right now until all this is complete. At which time the throne of God becomes the throne of God and of the Lamb. Right. Because He is going to claim both identities and sit in the throne as our Father. Yes. You're going to be awful disappointed if you're focused on the right hand of the throne of God looking for Jesus only to find out He's not there. I'm going to tell you where He will be. He's going to be on the throne. Hallelujah. He is going to be sitting there as God and He is going to be sitting there as our Father. We run this race today as we look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, we see Him today for who He is. But if we'll focus, we shall one day see Him as He is. 1 Corinthians 13, 12, the Apostle Paul declares, For now we see through a glass darkly, mm -hmm. but then face to face. Yes. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm going to try in closing today to sing this song. I'd rather just play a video. But I can't for copyright reasons. A hillside People were gathered Hoping to see Him As thousands were fed. He touched the blind eyes, healed broken spirits. He moved with Compassion, he raised up the dead. Once on a hillside, people were gathered watching 
as Jesus was crucified. No one showed mercy to the one who had healed them. Yet Jesus loved them as he suffered and died. Jesus had risen and soon would ascend. Then, as he blessed them, he rose to the Yeah. <laughs>